<laughs> Real quick backstory, guys. This is an MP9 2.0 compact, and I've had this gun for uh, about a year and a half, and I got it specifically for a project, and then I stopped shooting it shortly thereafter. And the reason why, <laughs> to be honest, I surprise myself at how poorly I shoot this particular firearm. Yeah, if you don't believe me, uh, I don't know why anybody would lie about that, but you can ask Sean Heron of We Like Shooting. He took a course uh, alongside me. We were right next to each other on the firing line, and I put this thing away after a few volleys and asked to borrow one of his guns because it was so bad. And really, I think that the one of the underlying issues is that I'm a Glock person, and I understand <laughs> the the irony of that statement does not escape me considering the genesis of my uh, content creator career in the firearms industry. This is Jack Gubigan. Wow, that was some juvenile stuff. It's amazing the difference 10 years makes, right? <laughs> but I have committed myself to re-exploring this pistol because I can't just be a one-trick pony. I have to be able to shoot well, and I shoot a lot of different handguns. I uh, I typically push people towards the Glock. I usually tell them to go with a Glock 19 size or class firearm, and that includes the M&P 2.0 compact. I just don't shoot this one well. I also tell people to go with the uh, the Canik series pistols, and I like the new IWI offering as well. Not a SIG 320 fan, but you get the idea. So if I am telling people that this is a viable firearm, then I need to be better with this gun. And for the, to that effect, I've recommitted myself to this pistol. So. Initially, I thought I set myself up for success by putting a premium grade barrel in, ooh, that's hot. Uh, put a premium grade barrel in the firearm and thinking that it was gonna give me a leg up. And uh, to give you an idea, real quick, there, I'm in a freeze frame for you guys. There's a misconception that the barrel and the sights are in parallel, that they are in the same uh, parallel plane and that is not the truth if that was the truth then the bullet would never rise to the sights and how this is accomplished is we co-witness at a certain distance the sights by changing the angle at which we line up the sights so that that bullet will cross at a particular point and co-witness or zero with the sights literally if you want to think about it like that if these sights are paralleled with the ground then the barrel, and this is gonna be an exaggeration, is actually arced like that. So what I have done is I've taken the after factory barrel that I put in initially and put the stock barrel back in, and then I've also set myself up for uh, the stuff that I'm used to, which is the XS sights. And these are DXT2s from XS, and that's commonly referred to as their big dot. For those not familiar, the way this thing works is it's modeled after a big game sight like they use in Africa on the double rifles. Low notch, lots of field of view, big center dot where it aim. And the way these things are set up, and it says it right on the back of the package, is at close ranges, 15 yards and in, you put the big dot in the center of the target and squeeze, and that's where the bullet will hit. At extended ranges, the way that it works, outside of 15 or I think 25 is what it says on the, on the package, I cannot remember off the top of my head, but you do a lower third hold, because the way that that thing is set up is at 15 yards, that bullet is designed to be inside that ballistic arc at 15 yards, which is kind of how a defensive sight should be set up, I would think. But at farther distances, it's gonna cross that line of bore and go up and then come back down to earth. So what I thought we would do, since I just installed these things last night, super easy install, by the way, uh, drift out the rear sight, it has a set screw on there, I use gratuitous amounts of Loctite, and then drift the front into position, and you're done. Uh, these do have a photoluminescent paint around them with a tritium vial on the inside So these will charge up uh, if they're exposed to any light whatsoever You'll get that big dot if they do deplete though you do still have the tritium vial So it's kind of like a redundant system But I thought what we would do today is first I want to track and see where these things hit at different ranges from the bench 
taking the human element out of it. And then we're gonna go down to the 100 yard range and see if Curtis still has it and see if we can bring this into balance. Uh, considering I've been doing a lot of rifle stuff lately, I think it's time to do a refresher on the pistol course. So also in my recommit, I've gone ahead and attached my holster for the MMP, it's an NSR, to my Wilder Tactical Review Belt rig. And if you guys missed uh, my video on the Wilder Tactical rig, then I'll have a link in the description box down below where you guys can check that out. This is something that y'all should know about if you don't already. Uh, I do believe that we have a playlist dedicated for it because it just is such an awesome set of gear. So I realized that in this light, it just looks terrible. So what I'm gonna do is actually swap over to steel. <laughs> and uh, it's just gonna be more, more entertaining for you guys because the way that the sun is, is just not gonna work. So this concept is important for the excess sights because they do use such a big dot. And the idea is that they're catered for defensive use. They're super close range sights. It's what they're designed for, for fast acquisition. But if you do have to take an extended shot, uh, you drift the sight down and coalesce the ballistic arc so that the sight is used on the lower third hold and now the target is visible again. So I think that they've got the angle correct there. Let's go ahead and see what I can do down on the 100 yard range. All right guys, so no tricks. Two magazines of ammunition here. I didn't bring any more. I think one of them may be short around. It looks to me, you tell me, it looks to me like this one is short around. So there may be one less round in there, but we're just gonna start. And I think that any closer than 25 yards is silly to start with a demo like this, but let's see. And we'll just see, take a couple shots, see what we can do. All right, let's move it on back. 50 yards and the target is like over here somewhere. It's a standard shootstudio.com static humanoid target. Here we go, let's see. Ah, come on, Kurt. All right, that was more than five rounds, but uh, you guys get the idea. You have to actually be able to shoot to prove this concept, and I have never claimed to be a super awesome shooter. Two, three, four, five. Magazine change. I wanted to keep it under because I wanted to have enough ammunition to make sure that I was able to give myself a good chance to hit something at 100 yards. I'm kind of struggling with how to how to set this thing up, but it looks like I just found it. So we're just gonna leave it right like that. And we're gonna see what we can do. Well, munitions expended. Said I wasn't gonna shoot any more <laughs> than two magazines. And uh, it took me a minute to find the hold. So what I'm gonna say is that 100 yards is probably the maximum yardage uh, that you can probably do an MMP 2.0 compact with the excess sights. I was covering the target. So what we've done is, again, freeze frame. We have met the second zero on that distance. So the bullet passes 
the first zero rises above the uh, line of sight and it comes back down and we're above that so what that means is that I had to come back up on my hold and now I'm covering the target at 100 yards so with a sight like the XS big dot sight because it is so big it giving us that fast acquisition up close once we reach that second zero ie once that bullet has passed the first zero risen above the line of sight and return back down to that second zero. And what that corresponds to is when we have to recover the target with the, the dot. That is what I prefer to call our maximum effective range of that particular site. And I think that we've thoroughly demonstrated what that is, about 100 yards, because that's when you have to reestablish that true hold with the site. And yes, you could shoot farther with Kentucky windage, finding something on the range to aim at that's above the, above the target. But as far as accurate shooting on the target, using the target itself as the point of aim, uh, 100 yards is pretty much what I'm going to call on the XS Big Dot site. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video as much as I had a good time shooting it. I'm actually quite happy with the way this turned out, considering that a month ago, before I made those changes, you'd be hard pressed to get me to do anything of consequence inside of 10 yards. So uh, moving along, we're gonna keep this thing in the holster and track its progress over time and track my progress over time, because again, I gotta be better. <laughs>